Hey everyone, this is Mario again, coming at you with another movie review, and it's yet another entry in Monster Fest. Uh, uh, uh. Today's review is a movie that I've actually been meaning to watch for the last couple of years, because I've heard a lot of good things about it. I believe uh, Matt has talked about it. I could be wrong, but I think Mike has touched on it. And talking with Efri a couple times on Skype and stuff, he's brought this film up. Yeah, it hasn't been, been a long time, though, since it's been brought up, though. It, of course, is the 1990 remake to a movie I already reviewed in Monster Fest, which is probably the review that you saw just before this, because I'm not uploading them in the order I'm recording, but... Anyway, it is the Tom Savini-directed remake of the 1968 Romero film, which he returns to produce and write the screenplay for here, Night of the Living Dead. This version stars um, Tony Todd, Patricia Tallman, Bill Mosley in a small role, Tom Towles, and William Butler. Now the plot is basically the same as the original movie that zombie that the bodies of the recently deceased are returning to life and these people end up in a farmhouse. And of course they have to learn to survive together and work together if they want to get out of there alive. Other than that, it is different. It's same but different. It's basically what a remake should be. This is one example. The other, another example, of course, is the next Dead remake, Dawn of the Dead, which I don't know if I'll get to that. But both this, not both Night of the Living Dead '90 and Dawn of the 2004 are examples of how you do a remake. Well, the 2004 one would be more of a reimagining, since the only thing it has in common is the mall thing. But this is how you would do a remake that basically takes the same exact story, just do just something different. It does some differences, but I actually had. I just watched Night of the Living Dead in 1968 before I saw this, so I noticed the differences right away, and I actually liked them. Now, there's not really much I could say about this, is that the film was handled by the same team as the original, with the exception that Tom Savini did the directing. And I'm not quite sure, because it doesn't mention it here, but I think he also did the special effects. And after watching the movie, I wouldn't put it past Tom to have done the special effects, because those look like Tom Savini's special effects, or at least ones that he supervised. And I have to say, as a director, he didn't do a bad job. And he did very good. He got good performances out of the actors. I felt he handled the camera work well. And I'm going to check real quick to see if this is the only movie he's directed. Because if it is, it's a shame. Because this guy should have directed more movies. I know he's done acting roles and, of course, makeup effects. But this is... A, okay, there we go, his director. Oh, he's only directed a few other things. He directed... He directed three episodes of Tales from Dark Side. I'm from California. California calls a lot. Call from California. Yeah, sorry about that. Brother was on the phone. Uh, it took a couple minutes to take care of. But anyway, Tales from Dark Side, Night of the Living Dead, something called Chill Factor House Call. I don't know if that's a movie or a show. And then a segment called Wet Dream from the Thea Theater Bazaar. Uh, that's kind of a shame. He should have directed more. I mean, his makeup effects right here, you know, Dawn of the Dead, Friday the 13th, Parts 1 and 4, Alone in the Dark, Creep Show, Day of the Dead, Creep Show 2, Monkey Shines, H.P. Lovecraft, 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 not Lovecraft, Lovecraft's Necronomicon. Oh, and he also did one this year called Red Ink. Sweet. And of course, acting. Hey, I didn't know this. He's gonna be in the. He's gonna be in that movie, Django Unchained. Oh, I did not know that. I didn't notice him in the trailer. Hmm. That should be interesting. Oh, he was also in that thing he directed, The Eater Bazaar. But anyway, like I said, he should have directed more. But what it is, this is probably his magnum opus when it comes to directing. And like I said, his uh, effects handiwork appears to be on it. Yeah. Oh, I could have checked this. Well, I'm on the subject. I'm going to go back and check to see if it says this one's on there because I just want to make sure. But I know, but I know a lot of. I know it's a little lull. But. It doesn't say it, so I'm guessing he just supervised it. And just shot it how he wanted it to be shot. But you never know. He might have done a little bit of touch up work. But. Anyway, uh, I'll talk about the cha the ma major change in the plot, and that is the character of Barbara. 
In the original Night of the Living Dead, she's basically like a comatose character, barely says anything, gets killed easily. But in here, she actually is basically like if you were to take Ripley and put her in the Night of the Living Dead universe. Not that that's a bad thing, that's basically what it is. And I have to say, I actually prefer that change. Because she's actually taking charge and stuff, and she actually does get them to stop fighting for a little bit. Something about calling them a bunch of two-year-olds and stuff. Mm, interesting. And also that she is a pretty good shot because she hits a lot of the zombies in the head. Very good. Um, <clears throat> now, uh, and of course she also survives, so that's one thing. It's not ever, it's not a move like the original where everyone dies, even though I don't have a problem with it. But here, she at least survives. That's a good thing. Now the other characters, her brother Johnny, he doesn't have as much scream time as in the original, but then again, unlike the original, we actually hear him talking as they're driving through the cemetery. And instead of it being their mother, I mean their father or something, it's their mother, who just recently passed. But we still do hear some of the same teasing, and he does do the impression, you know, they're coming to get you, Barbara. And I didn't even notice this was Bill Mosley at first. I noticed his name in the credits, but I didn't know that was him. But he did a pretty good job as Johnny. And of course, one thing I will notice is that they actually do, the beginning of the movie does kind of play out the fact that you, that most of the people seeing this movie probably have seen the original already, because they do a fake out, because they make you think that guy's going to be the zombie and it's not him, then the zombie just comes out of nowhere, it's like a jump scare, and it's a jump scare that really does work. So I have to say, for if you haven't seen either movie, watch the original first, then watch this one. That's what I say. But if you only want to watch one, I say watch this one. After saying the original is bad, it's just I can find myself watching this one more than the original. It's because of minor things, but mm. anyway, uh, the character of Ben, he's kind of a little bit more of a take charge character in the original, but that's partially due to Barbara, I guess. But here, Tony Todd playing him, I still does a pretty good job as him, and Tony Todd at one point punches a zombie in the face and. They don't do that stuff in the original. It's like, it reminded me of Dan Cook. I would punch every bee in the face. And of course, in this case, it's zombies. It's like, fuck you, zombies. Yeah, push those zombies. Don't let them take you down. Punch them. Punch them. Yeah. And then, of course, put, put putting the fire in the zombies' faces. Yeah, that was pretty cool. And then a little bit of shooting. Uh, William Butler as Tom Bittner, who is ba one of the teenage characters. He just does a pretty good job. You can get the fact he's a redneck. They, they change his character. He's actually related to the homeowner here, which I think works a little bit more. Uh, Katie Finneran as his girlfriend, Judy. He did a pretty good job as well. Nothing Oscar caliber from them, but pretty good. Sad thing is that uh, William Butler actually, from what I've read, is one of the writers behind the two last Return of the Living Dead movies, you know... Necro House or whatever, the rave thing. Which I'm like, oh god. And apparently he also was in some uh, movies I know. Like, apparently he was... I'll just go to his filmography real quick because I want to actually get the character name right. Apparently he played Ryan in Leatherface Texas Chainsaw Massacre 3. I believe that's the boyfriend character. And he also played Michael in Friday the 13th Part 7, The New Blood. If I remember correctly, that's the birthday boy. So... Been a while since I've seen the movie, but I believe that's the guy who Jason goes up behind him, sticks right to the chest, yeah. Which that's one of my favorite death scenes in that series. But you know, he got messed up by Jason. Goes from being killed by a zombie with a hockey mask to being just killed by zombies. <laughs> now, probably one of my favorite, my second favorite acting performance in the whole movie is by Tom Towles, who a lot of you more recently will know from Rob Zombie's first two movies, House of a Thousand Corpses and The Devil's Rejects. He played a lieutenant in the police force in those movies. Here he plays the one that plays Harry Cooper. And I have to say, in the 68th film, Cooper was a dick. Here, he is more of a dick. Maybe it's because the performance is a little bit more, you know, it's not the original one is kind of so, a little bit more subtle, while this one's a lot more pronounced. And maybe slightly over the top, but in the good way, in the way that you really want to hate the character. And also the fact that one major change also makes you hate the character even more, and that's basically the shootout thing at the end. Those of you who've seen the movie know what I'm talking about. Which kind of leads into this movie's version of There's Another One for the Fire, which I actually did like that, especially since it's said by Barbara. But I just hated Cooper the entire time. Even the one time he actually went and did something nice, I basically hated him because it kind of looked like he was going to be selfish with it. And when he does get his hands on the, gun, on the gun like he does in the original, you know that he's just doing it because he wants to be a dick. 
And then when he even hits his wife, I really, if I was in that movie, I would have smacked the crap out of him. I would have thrown him to the zombies, probably. Then again, if maybe not just for that, but if he'd done a couple more dickish stuff, I would have, because why should we really let him survive when other people who are not going to be dicks like him are getting killed? And of course, his wife, she does a pretty good job as well. The daughter doesn't say a word, just lays there. And I actually do like the change they do with the daughter instead of the killing in the thing, killing in the basement with the trial. Actually, have her come out of the basement. That was a pretty interesting change. And the ending of the movie is entirely different. I mean, it doesn't have that racial undertone, you know. Bang! It has another one for the fire. They change it, like I said, you know, Barbara gets out. The, everyone else in the house, I'm not going to spoil what happens, but I guess you could figure out what happens. She eventually meets a group of people. That's all I'm about I'm going to say, but just to let you know, she does survive. And she does say one of my favorite lines in the movie. They're us and we're them. Basically a, an outlook on it when she sees the good old boys out there in the field, what they're doing to the zombies. And I can, I can agree with her, it is. Kind of, and that's where some of the social commentary from the Romero zombie, zombie movies comes. You know, the original Dawn of the Dead being a play on consumer, consumerism. Day of the Dead basically being the military and science and then of course Land of the Dead basically being about social class from what I hear and this one it, it doesn't really have a whole social meaning just more kind of, it just has some of the theme of the original you know that all it would take is one thing for society to crumble it doesn't have that racial undertone which doesn't bother me because that was unintended in the original movie to begin with but here it does kind of have a little bit of that but you could you could always assume that hair that Cooper probably is racist and maybe that's the reason he doesn't want to listen to Ben, but it's up to the interpretation of the person. I mean, he's also a dick to Barbara, but then again, it could be because she was up there with him. But One thing I will say, the whole thing about why would did you come upstairs, they're in the basement a lot longer in the remake than in the original, so I have to say, if anything, it just that just shows how much more of a dick Cooper is here than he is in the original, which makes you hate him even more. My rating for the Night of the Living Dead remake... 5 out of 5 because I can't really think of anything wrong with this remake. It's a perfect example, textbook example in my opinion. It has pretty good acting. I mean, it's not all Oscar caliber acting. I mean, the closest performances that I would rate towards that are probably Tony Todd's, Patricia Tallman's, and of course, Tom Towles. The special effects, amazing. It's amazing zombie effects because it has a higher budget than the original. I mean, it had a 4... $2 million dollar budget which was utilized effectively sad thing is it barely made it above that at the box office so it more or less broke you even if you because I don't know how widely it was advertised but sad thing is this movie was also criticized at the beginning when it was first released like Ebert only gave it a one out of four stars but it's one of those movies that found its audience and actually is critiqued a lot more fair in recent years you know Halloween 2 suffered some of that same fate at least with the critics I mean Nowadays, on Rotten Tomatoes, it has a 66 from the critics and a 67 from the audience, so it has a fan base. And it has like a, I think a 5-something on IMDb. Um, no, higher than that, it has a 6.7 on IMDb. Well deserved, it uh, said, said special effects. The score I thought was pretty good. Um, didn't use that famous piece from the original, but that was stock music anyway from what I remember. Um, Sets were pretty good, especially the house setting. The the explosion scene was done very well. The use of boards and stuff. The amount of zombies I thought was good, and we don't really see that much gore, or at least I didn't know that much, except for maybe of course the bullet stuff, the bullets entering people's bodies, and of course the cannibalistic scenes. But I thought it was utilized pretty well, especially when it builds tension at the beginning. Uh, like I said, five out of five, and if you are a fan of the Romero zombie films and you haven't seen this movie, I say watch it. If you're a fan of zombie movies in general, I say watch it.